Right now on Denver 7 News at 7 o'clock on Local 3, the state school board has authorized a reshuffling of Adams 14, but school leaders there aren't giving up. We ain't going anywhere. Their renewed commitment to students as officials lay out a timeline for changes. Time is running out for state lawmakers. The session ends today and there's still plenty of work to be done. We're tracking the progress of some high profile legislation overnight. Plus, it's awesome that this is being recognized and that she has gotten the care that she deserves. Two Denver paramedics getting well-deserved honors for their response to a 911 call at the red flags they saw that saved a woman's life. Uh, incredible how their social training kicked in yeah. in addition to their medical training. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. It's going to be a hot day at today. Lisa is here and unfortunately the conditions are once again putting us in high fire danger. Yeah, it's going to be a hot wind too. We saw this last weekend and right now we're looking at some fairly calm conditions, but you're going to see these winds start to pick up here by early afternoon. Right now about 10 to near 15 miles per hour in Denver. It is a beautiful start to our day though. We're seeing a lot of sunshine it's a bright eastbound drive, upper 40s and low 50s right now. Look at how fast though this hourly planner climbs. We're going to be at about 77 degrees by 11 o'clock. That'll already be about 7 degrees above normal, and then we'll hit highs in the mid to upper 80s, near 90 in Denver this afternoon. Well into the 90s near Pueblo and La Junta, more 60s than 50s for the mountains today. Fire danger is high. I mean, we have red flag warnings covering most of the state today. We'll take a look at the fire danger today and tomorrow, even with a cold front tomorrow, Jason. It's going to be way too dry and windy, and so fire danger will remain high. And it makes for good driving conditions. We do have a lot of sunshine to deal with here on the eastbound routes, but I'm not seeing any significant big problems right now. As from the camera up by the Thornton Parkway, did have an earlier crash on the southbound side, but lanes are open. You can see how fast the folks on the uh, southbound side through the express lane are going compared to the main lanes. One of the reasons that we see crashes here in what's called now the crash corridor from 104th down to 84th Avenue, but you can see the drive time is standard by 25, 20 minutes or so on I-76. I-70 is still busy on that westbound side heading for I-25 and no problems now through the Denver Tech Center, but this is going to really start getting busier, especially around University heading for Colorado Boulevard, so that's starting to bunch up, but the rest of the drive looks okay. One crash out to the east side near Green Valley Ranch near Piccadilly. A shakeup is coming for Adams 14 school district. The state school board stripped its accreditation and ordered the district to reorganize after years of poor performance. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta joins us from Adams City High School in Commerce City. And Veronica, nothing will change today, but I'm sure families there are wondering what the future holds. No changes this morning. You know, everything's going to go on as it usually does right here behind me at Adam City High School. Students are going to start showing up here pretty soon. They're going to go to their first period. Eventually, they'll make their way to lunch, out to recess, and then, you know, home for the end of the day as well. Pretty normal. It's going to be the case at all Adams 14 schools as well. However, that big change comes through the reorganization process. The first step is creating what's being called an organization planning committee. That committee will be tasked with coming up with a new plan for the district, one that community members will actually get to give their feedback on. Part of that will require working with an outside management company. That company is called TNTP. Now, during a meeting back in April, the school district came up with its own plan to fix some of these issues. Those included stronger systems around the teacher learning cycle, improving student performance, through shared accountability systems, among some other measures. That wasn't enough, though. District leaders told us losing this accreditation isn't ideal, but makes them strengthen their commitment to students. We ain't going anywhere. Our superintendent, our leadership team, our school board, we came into this knowing this wouldn't be easy. Turnaround never is. What they care about is, is my school going to be there next year? The answer is yes. Are the teachers that I know and trust going to be given the opportunity to do their job? The answer is a categorical yes. And the reorganization process, it isn't going to happen overnight. Officials say it could take up to more than a year. We're in Commerce City this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Yeah, the school year winding down, and it is the final day of the state legislature today, and there's still a lot of work to be done. In the House, Republican representatives are asking bills to be read out loud in their entirety, which is allowed under the state constitution. They hope to leave Democrats with less time to pass some of these more controversial last-minute bills. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford joins us from the state capitol with a look at the measures coming right down to the wire, Jessica. 
That's right, Nicole. And there is that fentanyl bill that we have had our eyes on for months. It's going to go to something called a conference committee to see if they can get to a final version of that bill. This is all coming after last night when the House could not pass a version approved by the state Senate. As written now, it increases penalties for those in possession of the deadly synthetic opioid. The threshold for felony charges is one gram instead of four. The measure also puts millions of dollars towards drug testing and treatment. Another measure helps address the hospital staffing problems that arose during the height of the pandemic. The bill requires each hospital to create a committee to come up with a nursing staffing plan. The plan would be sent to the state and posted online. And finally, we have two environmental bills, one called the Producer Responsibility Program for Recycling. It would require companies that sell products in Colorado to pay into a program that in turn establishes a list of recyclable items and educates the public on it. There would also be incentives for those same producers to use recycled products. And there's a bill that's meant to make new homes and other buildings more energy efficient. That's still under discussion. The state would have to come up with an energy code by 2025 that exceeds international standards. The bill also creates grant programs to convert public building HVAC systems to electricity. And while these bills again are still on the line, a number of bills have passed. One of those includes reproductive rights. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the show. Live in Denver, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. Thank you, Jessica. The Adams County clerk and recorder says he's had to beef up security at his office in Brighton because of threats he's received since the 2020 election. Josh Ziggelbaum now wears a bulletproof vest at work. He says election deniers have made direct and indirect threats against him and his staff. His office is being remodeled now to better protect employees. They're even adding film to windows to make them shatterproof. I never thought that it would escalate to this level. I think January 6th was a good reminder that it can very easily go beyond just words. As Ziggelbaum is up for re-election this November, despite the threats, he says he's not backing down. Uh, Lakewood, Denver, and DIA will be testing their outdoor warning sirens about 11 a.m. Just a heads up. We use these in, uh, for example, if there's a tornado coming and we need to alert the, the city of Denver, um, or if there's a nuclear threat and we need to alert people, um, shelter in place. It's all the same sound again around 11 a.m. in Denver and Lakewood today. Uh, Denver is also testing its email and text emergency alert systems this week and next. You can sign up for those on denvergov.org slash emergency testing or just check with your city or county for information on how to sign up for their alerts. Speaking of emergencies, two Denver paramedics are being honored for their heroics, Julia and Laura answered a call back on January 6th. A woman in her 20s complained of abdominal pain, but something to them seemed off. When I was trying to talk to her and figure out the story, it just nothing seemed to make sense. And the answers that she was giving us was very one worded. The dynamic between her and the man on scene uh, really kind of gave me you know, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. She had stated that she was taking one medication that he was giving to her every day. So uh, their instincts and specialty training kicked in, knowing the signs of human trafficking. Laura and Julia were awarded for their efforts at the annual Paramedics Award celebration yesterday. Nicole was the MC <laughs> for the event. 13 awards were handed out, and the money raise goes to support mental and physical health for Denver Health Paramedics. Um, just one of many wild so stories. So many incredible yeah. stories yesterday. They played videos uh, featuring several of the paramedics and police officers in Denver who, yeah. who went above and beyond right. the call of duty. They do yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. Well, if summer vacation is on your mind, book fast. Travel experts say expect high demand and high prices for some popular destinations. Also, prices are still sky high for potential home buyers in Colorado. So this morning we're taking a 360 in-depth look at the housing market and whether it's better to own or rent right now. Also some affordable housing solutions available for older Coloradans.